If you're looking for a way to show the last 13 months on your access based on the slicer selection that you made, then this video is for you. I will show you how you can program that using a separate calendar. Stay tuned. So for users, it's often super helpful if they can look at today and then the last 12 months, because it will give them an idea of the trends and how the company is doing. Now, this kind of stuff is easy in Power BI. As you could see, I have a visual here that has the sales over time. And if somebody would want to see the last 12 months, they could move the date into the visual, click on a relative date and click is in the last 12 months. And then if you apply a filter, it will always look at today and then show the last 12 months. Very easy. But a request the users often have is, what if I select five months ago? And let's say I select June 2020. Then they want to see June 2020 until July 2019. Uh, and that's problematic because you cannot do that with this date filter. This date filter always looks at today and then looks ahead or looks back. So this is not going to solve our problem here. Also problematic is using just the normal slicers because if you select 2020, you will see all of the months. But if the requirement is to show June and then 12 months back, then you're not going to be able to do this either. Okay, so I had to think a little bit on how else we could solve this here. Since I usually work with very big models, I like it when I have a calendar table that's connected to my sales tables. So the model we're looking at right now, it has a calendar table connected to sales. And this allows me to use the standard year-to-date functions, quarter-to-date, and other time intelligence. But if I was thinking for myself, if I want a user to be able to select in a slicer what period they want to select, then, of course, if I would select a month and a year, so month 6, 2020, and I want this filter to be filtering through to the visual, then that always means that my time trend, my trend line here in the bottom, is only going to show a single month. So this is problematic. To solve this, I'm going to show you what you can do. So of course, the user will select the month and the year. So we're going to keep this here. And what I'm going to show you now is what I did in the model. So the calendar is connected to sales. And we're going to make a separate calendar, which I call a presentation calendar. Now, this one is identical. So the normal calendar has four columns. It has a date, a year, month, month, and year. And if I go to the present, uh, the regular calendar, I was already showing it, it looks identical. So you're going to see that one of those calendars is connected as a regular one. And the presentation calendar, you could connect it if you want to. But in this case, let's keep it disconnected. Now, what we can then do is since we're going to be filtering on the regular calendar, I will uh, I will try and see if we can get the presentation calendar year and month on the axis. So there is a year. I remove the other one, and there will be a month. Okay. Obviously, it's now showing the same number for each month and each year. Let me open it here. Yeah. And the one thing I will do is just make sure I can sort this by year and month, and we will do it ascending. The reason why we see the, the same value for each month is because there's no relationship here. So we will have to program a little bit in DAX. The total sales measure already exists. So now what we're going to do is we're going to write a separate measure to make this, to make this all work. This new measure we'll call total sales. And actually, I want to show the last 13 months so that if we select June this year, then we're also going to see June last year. Now, since the user is selecting from our current slicer that shows the month and the year, I'm going to have a first, which is a max date, uh, which is going to be our variable. Variable is... the maximum of the regular date column. And what I'm then going to do is the max date 13 months ago is E of month. I can select my max date 
and then select minus 13 months. Okay, then my results. The first thing we will have to check is that in our formula, we have only uh, got a single month and a single year selected. So I will write if it has one value and I will use a single value for uh, the year, year, month, month of the presentation calendar. It's important we look at that column because that's the, the columns that are put into the visual. Okay, so if it has one value, uh, it has a single value. And then what we can do is make sure that the maximum of the date, uh, presentation calendar date, has to be smaller or equal to the max date, which is based on the regular calendar. And the minimum of the date from the presentation calendar has to be bigger than the max date 13 months ago. Okay, and if that is true, we are going to make a calculation. Let me just put some indents here. We are going to do a calculate of our regular sales measure, total sales. And what we'll have to do is we filter. Uh, first of all, we have to take the filters of the month and the year of the regular calendar. Those are the ones we're filtering. So it's the all for month. Uh, there's the all for year. And we're going to want to put a filter on the year, year, month, month here. So I'm going to include this in the all formula too. Okay. And then what we'll do is we say that uh, the calendar month has to be equal to the values that we see in our filter context in the visual. So what this will do, it will look in the visual what month is being shown. And what we can then do is write is values month. And also we have to make sure that the year for the calendar is equal to the value being shown in the year for the presentation calendar. Okay. And if this is not the case, I want to return a blank. Voila. Then we want to return the result of this and press enter. Uh, so the min one still needs to have something here. The parentheses are wrong. Okay, perfect. Now, in the old visual, we still had the, the, old, the, the measure that was the regular total sales, but now we can add the measure that's called total sales for the last 12 months. And as you can see, we have now selected in our slicer month six, and it's showing us until month six in the previous year. But if we move this one to month 12, you're gonna see that it shows month 12, 2020 till month 12, 2019. And obviously we can move back and forward with this. And with this formula, you can very easily change the amount of months you want to show. So if you want to change to 16 months, you can easily just adjust it and it will show you in the table here. Now, what has this achieved? What you have achieved here is that the user is able to show the numbers in the comparison period that they want to, and they're not dependent anymore on what day it is today. This is, for example, very useful when you're showing the, the balance sheet numbers for financial reporting or your profit and loss, because people always want to see some kind of trend comparison. And you don't want to just see, show a single uh, month, but you also don't want to show the last 12 months by date. Now, as you can see, it gets a little bit more complex here. We take things step by step. And by doing this, the user experience gets much more improved. It's something that's not easy to do with the user interface, but your financial and operational reporting is gonna benefit from this. And the coming time, I will try to show some more techniques which you can use for your reports. So if you don't wanna miss anything, click subscribe, click on that bell button, and you'll make sure that you don't miss any videos. I'll see you next time. Thank you.